So at Slide3D, a lot of clients come to us wanting to design electrical enclosures, electrical enclosures that they can produce one or 10 or even 100,000 pieces of. But there's a few versions of those that are very difficult, and this is one of them. Electrical enclosures that are round and curved, having domes and smooth rounds and vents and everything else, are actually quite difficult to 3D print if they're not designed appropriately. So in this video, we're gonna go through this injection molded design and talk about how you would modify it in order to make it as manufacturable as possible with mass production 3D printing. So there are a number of key features of this part that make it really difficult. Number one, there are the vents around the outer hole. The reason these are difficult is as they are made right now, they are very thin features and 3D printed parts don't prefer thin features. They end up becoming brittle. Uh, also end up leading to certain parts of error because each one of these is an individual tool move that has to be very precise and can lead to deformation or warping or drop off or break off or whatever else it happens to be. So these are really not that great of an option. The other issue is the fact that it both has a small curve on the top, a very shallow curve. And the problem with a very shallow curve is that it's inconsistent and causes all kinds of layer stepping because it's each new layer comes up, it moves inward, which ends up creating some cosmetic rings that might not be really that ideal. Uh, and then on top you have this other little vent right here and a kind of push button flexible area. Now on the back you have a battery port and some slots and stuff that are not that big of a deal. Uh, though I do want to call attention to this bottom chamfer. This bottom curve right here goes and becomes quite steep, as in it's almost horizontal when it starts. And this is not ideal because it'll cause sag and warp inside of a 3D printed part, so we'll address that as well. When you get inside of the piece, of course you have all the electronics in here and ways of mounting it up, but then you also have these various ribs and sprues and standoffs and that kind of thing. Most of these are not a huge concern, but there's a way to eliminate a lot of them, reducing your overall design time. So let's start with uh, the first kind of feature here, which is its roundedness. Since this part is round, it cannot print in our preferred orientation, which is sideways. Each one of these pieces has to be printed flat on a build plate like this. If we were redesigning this whole part from scratch, if we were there at day one when this concept was starting out, we would recommend going for a design like this, something straight and faceted, because this allows you to print it on its edge like this, which means that both halves are able to be printed vertically, which means they can auto eject much more easily. There's less surface contact with the bed, so that it has a higher quality bed interface layer. And overall, this is a fairly good look, but it is a little bit intense for a lot of home type products, which this is for. But whenever going for the best surface finish, you always wanna go for very faceted designs because they're very controlled and consistent as the part rises. And then if you wanna eliminate the 3D printed look, it's very easy to apply a texture to this piece so that you can't really tell that it's 3D printed. But this is not possible with this rounded part because if we printed it on its side, well then you have support and this side deforms and all kinds of silliness happens. So that's not really an option here. So given that constraint, it has to be round from a, a user industrial design standpoint. How how would we go about this? Well, we would go ahead and design it basically the way it is. So the way we've done this is we will start with the bottom layer here. The bottom, the side profile, we changed just slightly. So rather than being a chamfer that curves all the way around to horizontal, it's truncated. So it curves a bit and then cuts off right there, which doesn't really change the cosmetic from the original very much, but is something to be aware of. Otherwise you end up with this warp and kind of nasty first surface. The vents themselves, the vents were challenging because there's a lot of them and they are straight and small features. So what what we do there is we actually make them longer and what we did is we made the vents cut into an angle at the wall and what we did to achieve that is we made the wall a little bit thicker. That was possible because inside of here there were ribs around the exterior of the part in order to stiffen it and to act as finding features which essentially take up the same volume as a thick wall but that is done in injection molding in order to make sure that there aren't maximum thickness parts and pieces around that would cause shrinkage and other sort of issues. Issues. So by making the wall thicker and then cutting the vents through at an angle, you have much larger features so that the tool head has more time to deposit material reliably and more structural stability so that you have a very good looking exterior part and these vents still have the same amount of airflow as before. And it is a little bit higher quality because now people can't look in there and see all of your electronics around. 
Also, these vents are a very expensive molding feature because there are a lot of individual pins that have to go into that or have to be machined. It is a fairly complex mold. So moving to 3D printing reduces your startup costs by an enormous amount. And then you have the internal uh, circuitry and battery case and that kind of stuff. Rather than using individual sprues, small cylinders with holes in them sticking up, we would combine all the holes into a single plate layer so that they're able to be printed all at once, which creates a very strong, reliable set of holes and doesn't have to worry about snap off or anything along those lines. So that is basically how the bottom layer is made. This is a little bit unhandy because you have an entire large broad surface against the bed, which means that this bottom surface is prone to errors. This might not be a big issue because we could either paint the entire unit to get rid of stains or deformation if that happens to be an issue, but this is also a non-customer facing part. So if it's an industrial type of use, then it's not really that big of a deal. But ideally what we would do is go through here and make a number of cavities kind of like this battery hole so that the bottom layer is as minimum surface area as possible in order to minimize those types of errors. And then the individual standoffs and things, you would those would be individual features that you would design for printing individually. And we go over the vi other videos and those types of features there. This is mainly about the roundedness. Okay, moving on to the top cap now. The top cap was probably the most challenging part of this because you have that smooth curve up top, which is really not desirable because you end up with this, these curved layers where each stair step creates a ring on the top of the part. But what we did with this is we actually leaned into it. This original design had a number of rings around the outer edge. So we used those and we spread them around to make them kind of blend in with the rings from the 3D printed layers themselves. So it looks much more intentional. We controlled the texture and used the texture so that it just has a lot of concentric circles, some more emphasized than others based on the CAD that we did. The top button was easy. There's no problems there with that at all. You go ahead and press on that and that's not an issue in any sort of fashion. The little uh, vent on the front, right now these holes are this direction, which is fine, but again, you end up with these really thin features that have to be printed. You always want grids to be in plane with the layers. So what we did is we just made them curves going with the circles themselves, which means they also blend in with those outer lines quite well and create a nice looking feature. And then inside you do have this rougher bottom side, which has to be supported, which is not ideal. This part has to have post-processing, manual post-processing. And there's not really very many ways to get around that. Unless, again, if we're going back to the original design, this is all assuming a 90 degree horizontal kind of layout where this prints this direction, this prints this direction. But what you can do in order to eliminate support in the lid and in other parts like this is rather than cutting straight through like this, you cut at an angle. If we made this part line at an angle here, it would mess with some of the cosmetics and the overall industrial design of the part, but you would eliminate support because now this lid gets to kind of print on its edge to where it is able to be grown without support underneath it because there's nothing that's a direct loan overhang anywhere. Lastly, the thing you would want to do is since this part would be printing like this in order to maintain a good overall texture and uniform outer surface finish, you would want to chamfer the lips of this lid just a little bit to make sure that it doesn't have any sort of side extrusion on the first layer. Now, that would be both of those parts. They would be a little bit more expensive because having these large broad parts on the print beds is not ideal because it's tough to get them ejected and sometimes auto ejection is not possible if this part is larger, which again is why you really wanna go for a flat datum side somewhere on it. This can sometimes be done with these things by like making just a single flat face on this somewhere along the way so that it could be like a charging port or an inlet or something access area so that this, this can be printed on its side but then you get into weird issues with the uh, cooling veins and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's not the best. This part is best printed in this direction. Uh, and those are the general kind of rules to get it done so that it looks nice. Now, this is all printed with the Virgin 3D printed layer lines, uh, which are point, printed at a 0.2 resolution, is generally fine for most consumer and definitely industrial applications. If it was industrial, we'd probably go down to more of a draft uh, layer height. But if you don't really like the 3D printed look, sometimes you wanna get away from it. So in that case, what we recommend doing is applying a texture. And that texture right here, we use basically kind of a popcorn orange peel kind of a look where we just add a little bit of noise to the outside of the part, which gives it this very kind of matte sort of fuzzy look, which is great because it is much more forgiving in production. This can save you a lot of cost using this type of texture. And it creates a very uniform look throughout the part because it doesn't have, oh, the side of the part, the top of the part, where the 3D printing 
really shows a transition point. But the other thing with this too is that white is the most difficult color to print with. The pigmentation inside of white is very chunky and almost turns the flow of it into sort of like toothpaste. So if you can avoid using white, you want to. This can be done by printing in some other color and then painting it, or just by printing in some other color. If that is done, you can go with like these grays and that kind of stuff, which creates a much smoother sort of finish. The darker the color, the better the print quality and appearance will be because the pigmentation inside of it is a much lower lift as far as flow rate. And you can also mix and match uh, surface finishes. So in this case, we have the smooth upper lid and then kind of the matte textured bottom half, which could be used to help this part like blend into a wall if you're planning to mount this in a lot of spackled houses where it's like an orange peel wall. This helps it kind of transition in that direction, which can be a really nifty trick to try uh, from a design perspective. And then of course, using the gray, is a much more industrial, but it is a cheaper type of material to work with. And then if you really wanna go crazy, if for some reason your product can support this, which most can't because it's a little ostentatious, you can go with just different colors. So like this is a pearlescent sort of white, which again really helps to improve the appearance of the part over just a native 3D printed white, like so here. But the it is a more expensive material, but again, it creates a different type of aesthetic that you might not be able to get a hold of regularly. So hopefully that is a good summary. Round 3D printed enclosures for mass production are actually quite difficult to work with. And if you're not designing for the process explicitly, if you just ask us to 3D print your injection molding design, there's a number of problems that can come up as far as quality and appearance and strength and structure. But if you design for the process, you can end up with something that is pretty much equivalent and even indistinguishable from the original that just now happens to be made with 3D printing, which means that you have now reduced or eliminated your startup costs around tooling and shipping, and you're able to experiment with the market and change your design over time without having a large tooling change cost. But again, one more reminder, if you are making an enclosure like this, try not to use round, try to use some faceted or some flat edged feature so that it can be printed on its side. Have a great day, everybody.